Hello, Tungsten Miner here. Last time in this series on thermal expansion, we finished talking about the various kinds of ducts. So now let's finish up with the last couple of things in the mod. Next, we have viaducts. Um, these are a relatively recent addition, although not brand new. And what they do is they move the player. So if I come over here and I click on this, right click on it, it's going to show me all of the different openings. I'm at the left one. Of course, I could go to the center one or I could go to the right one. So let's say I want to go to the right one. I just click here and zoom. The player goes straight through to the other side. Click the center one and zoom. I've gone straight through to the middle. So the way this works, and let me just grab some of these and uh, set this up from scratch because it's not exactly straightforward how you make these things. So get rid of that, get rid of that, uh, fix my little floor here. So I'm going to take my viaduct, plop them down, and then I need to use my crescent wrench to open up whatever destinations I want to create. So wherever I want to get out of this thing. So I'll do one on that side by right clicking, one on that side by right clicking, and then I'll do one in the middle by right clicking as well. And then uh, I'm just going to right click again, and you can see we've got the basic setup, you know, all the destinations are recognized, but we haven't configured any of them. So I'm going to hit config. I could uh, drop a block here to give it a icon, and I could say this is my left hand side, and I can click here and config. Maybe I'll just leave no icon. This is my right. Oops, no, this is my center. And then over here, maybe I'll drop uh, my grass block on there, and I'll say this is my right hand side. And now I've reproduced that little example that I started with. Also though, you notice uh, I can go a long long ways here and I've got a different kind of duct that allows me to do that. So what's the reasoning here? Well, if we look at the recipe it will become pretty obvious. In order to make a viaduct you first need to make the empty shell which is bronze and any kind of hardened glass and then you need to fill it up with this Zephyrian erythium, which is from the dust, which is basically from the blitz powder and some other stuff. So uh, not easy to come by, right? You need 100 uh, millibuckets, so uh, you can get 10 of these things for one bucket. Um, but that's not a lot, right? If you wanted to go a long, long ways, you'd have to collect a lot of that stuff to be able to make it. So what we have instead is this long-range viaduct, and its recipe is way simpler. All you need is some lead and some hardened glass, any kind of hardened glass, and you get eight of these things. Not one, but eight, and you don't have to fill it with anything. So if you need to get from here to a long ways off, this is going to be so much cheaper than trying to build these things. But in order to connect these two systems together, you'll notice actually this is just subtly different from this one. It's got that kind of purple color. This has got a uh, kind of resonant ender, endery sort of color. And then down here we've got that orange color. So these guys are a transition sort of duct, long range linking viaduct. Uh, and their recipe is to basically make a normal viaduct, which has already got erythium and all that stuff in it, and then to add a full bucket or four ender pearls worth of resonant ender to make the transition duct. So these are super expensive, even by comparison to these guys. But what that allows you to then do is connect your regular viaduct system, which maybe is how you get around your house, to a long-range viaduct system, which maybe gets you to some distant base or some other location far, far away, uh, very rapidly. So the way these things work is uh, I'm going to click here. I've already set up my various def destinations. And when I say I want to go far away, it's going to bring me to that transition, charge up a little bit, and then zoom me off on my way. It doesn't take very long, so you might not even notice. But you'll see some uh, ender particles come around while I'm in there waiting. And then off I go. And so if I wanted to go all the way back to near, it'll take a little bit longer to get me going. And then I charge again when I get to that middle junction, and here I am. Because 
long range viaducts can only connect on each side to exactly one of these converters and that's it you can't have a bunch of converters hanging off the bottom here to bring you off into various systems it has to go from one to the next and then on the opposite end of this guy you'll want to have one of these so that you can kind of get back out into the world uh, because you also can't just jump into one of these directly you have to go through this conversion process so let's say I go to the middle one and here I am and we can see what I've done I've got the regular viaducts on the floor I've got the conversion viaduct in the middle and then it goes off to the left and to the right which is why when I'm zooming through from that side all the way down to that side I stopped and kind of recharged a bit in the middle because I came through this um, the, the converter viaduct and so that meant I had to stop and recharge and go through again super fun super cool really really neat way to get around um, yeah I love these things I think they're tremendous in addition to our item ducts you can on each side deal with these different kinds of connectors uh, so you know with the crescent hammer of course you can disconnect them so it's not going to put items into that box at all and reconnect them and you can even do this in the middle you know disconnect and reconnect but over here I've actually added another device called a servo and uh, these things are actually super cheap to make iron tin glass no problems but they also come in various uh, different flavors so there's uh, all those same kind of upgrades you might expect you know the signal version the reinforced version the resonant version and the hardened version uh, and you basically just upgrade one to the next to the next to the next in order to get from spot to spot Oh no, actually, these ones are a little different. You uh, always start with servos and you add the metal to be able to upgrade them. In any case, what they do is they allow you to then automatically extract items from an adjacent inventory. So here I've got a blacklist or a whitelist to say I want to definitely not extract or definitely do extract, whatever kind of thing. Uh, if I set it to blacklist and don't put anything in there, of course that means nothing is blacklisted, which means everything is okay to extract. I can also control how many I want to pull out at a time. So let's say I want to take one of anything. That's this setting. In here, I've got oak planks and cobblestone. Maybe I decide, all right, I want to leave the cobblestone alone. So I'm going to come over here and put cobblestone on the blacklist. And now let's... Uh, Say I'm going to have one of those and one of those and one of those because the uh, servo is basically going to start with the inventory in the top left corner and just kind of work its way through. And if I uh, take a look here, I've got the same redstone control that I've got for most of my machines. And I've got this set to needing a high signal right now. So when I throw this switch, it should start extracting. But since the cobblestone is blacklisted, uh, I shouldn't expect to see the cobblestone coming out. And sure enough, I'm only getting the wood. It's jumping right past the cobblestone, and now it's just going to take this whole stack. As I said, there are many different variants of this, and uh, the difference comes down to lots more features. So not only do I have a much bigger filter panel, so I can have a blacklist, whitelist with many more items, I can have much larger stack size. I can only do up to four with the plane servo. Now I can do up to 64. Uh, and I have all of these options for deciding how to interpret the things that are in the filter. So here I'm saying ignore metadata. Uh, if I wanted to though, I could turn that off and say put in a certain kind of um, wood planks, for example. And if I have this turned off, it's going to say, oh, wood planks any kind of wood planks, doesn't matter. If I have this turned on, it's going to say, oh, wood planks have a metadata number. Uh, so zero, I think, is oak, and then one is birch, and then jungle, and whatever. Uh, it's gonna pay attention to that. So you could put in just like oak and birch, and then only get those ones. Uh, NBT is all of the extra data. So, um, gosh, what's a good example of this? Uh,
it's complicated. If you don't know what NBT is, just turn it off. You probably don't care. <laughs> um, ignore or dictionary. So or dictionary uh, is when you have multiple things that uh, basically are the same item. So for example, if you have uh, multiple mods installed, many uh, mods install a copper ore of some kind and a tin ore of some kind, including thermal expansion. So uh, if you had, um, uh, let's say, industrial craft also installed, then industrial craft adds both copper and tin. And they use a system internally called this ore dictionary to say, I'm adding a copper block. And thermal expansion likewise says, I'm adding a copper block. And they're different blocks, they've got different textures, they look different, um, but the game knows, because of this ore dictionary, to treat them as the same item. So you can say, I don't care about the ore dictionary, and I want to treat industrial craft copper differently from thermal expansion copper, or I do care, and I want to know which one is which, so I'd have to turn that back on again. Uh, th this uses the ore dictionary to say all copper is the same, this ignores it and treats each copper as a different kind of copper. This allows you to uh, sort or to pull things out by mod owner. So if I say use the mod owner, when I put an item in here, it's going to pay attention which mod this item came from. Uh, and if I click this off, it'll ignore that. Finally, um, I'm going to talk about this in a future example, but it allows you to change where the items go. Uh, but I'll get back to that in just a minute. So uh, now I've got this thing set up to extract whole stacks at a time and uh, also require redstone current. So I've got a whole box full of cobblestone here. And um, I've got two different chests installed. So uh, getting back to this thing here, nearest first uh, versus, uh, whoa, uh, nearest first versus furthest first and so on. Uh, let me get, realize I set up this example not in the best way because uh, it's important how far away these things are. So for example, if I set this one up to be quite far away, now I've got uh, this chest, which is one, two, three pipe segments away. And I've got this one over here, which is one, two, three, four, five pipe segments away. So this chest in the middle here is actually further away than this chest on the other side. So when I look at this resonant servo, it's going to say, where do I want these items to go when I pull them out? Nearest first means I'm going to go look for the nearest chest and send the items there. Now you see those ones shot across to this guy and they completely ignored that other guy. I can say, go to the furthest first. And they go off to that guy and they ignore this guy because he's nearest and he's furthest. I can say random, don't care where they go. Some will go one way, some will go the other way. Or I can say round robin, send some one direction, send some the other direction, send them back to the first guy, then the second guy, then the first guy, then the second guy. So you can see it's every other one sending them to different places. And this is a good example of how thermal expansion thinks about sending items around. Different mods have different philosophies about how their their you know tube systems work. In the case of thermal expansion, as soon as something is put into the pipe system, it decides where it's going to go right off the bat. There's no ambiguity and there's no changing its mind. There's no uh, figuring it out as it goes along. So Buildcraft, for example, works on the opposite principle. You put something in the pipe system and it's in the pipe. And then that pipe pushes it to the next pipe, and that pushes it to the next one. And each pipe is making its own decisions about what to do with that item. Uh, so if you get to a certain kind of pipe that uh, deals with a forking situation like this, it might have some rules of its own to decide what to do. But not in thermal expansion. Once something comes in, it's going to look at the rules of the pipe system, and by default, always move to the nearest inventory, which has the ability to accept that particular item. Uh, this is one of the ways in which you can gain some more control over that because this resonant servo has this ability where other servos do not. Um, and, uh, you know, I forget exactly where this comes in, but you can kind of experiment for yourself and figure out, like, does the signal and servo have it and not the reinforced one? I don't remember exactly. Um, 
but that is one of the abilities you gain by upgrading and using more interesting and powerful servos. In addition to servos, Thermal Expansion also offers filters, and these guys allow you to say, I do or don't want particular things to wind up in this inventory. So in this simple example, this is the lowest level, simplest filter. Uh, so we can take a look at the recipe over here. Nope, that's Retriever, Servo. Where are the filters? No, looks like I have to look them up. Here we go. Um, it's basically the same recipe as a Servo, except you use paper. Uh, so you've got tin and iron, and the upgrades work um, more or less the same way. Um, looks like here there's recipes to directly make the upgrades. The recipes for all these things have been shifting around a bit, so uh, I suspect the mod author is going to straighten out some of those things uh, and make them more consistent as he goes along. But in any case, uh, here I'm saying in this filter, I have a whitelist, and I only want oak wood planks, except uh, there's no other controls, right? So I don't get to decide whether NBT or mod owner or... Uh, or dictionary is one of my choices. I just get to say, well, Oakwood planks. And um, if I recall correctly, that's going to mean that uh, you wind up getting just Oakwood planks. It's, it's the most specific version of that. So if I just say those four, take those out. There goes the spruce. There goes the oak, and that went in. There goes the birch, and there goes the jungle planks. So when you're using this one, you only get the most exact thing. You can't do the fuzzy kind of matching that you do otherwise. Uh, over here, I've got the resonant ones, so the most extremely upgraded ones, uh, which has a bunch of different capabilities. Uh, here we can say how many items we want in there. So I've got an example of that right next door. Here I'm saying blacklist these particular kinds of wood. I want to ignore metadata, so uh, I don't. Um, I want to ignore metadata, so I'm uh, paying attention. Um, which I want to use the metadata because I care about which kinds of wood it is. Um, I want to ignore NBT. I don't want to pay any attention to that or that. Um, and now, when I go ahead and I'm going to turn off this guy. And we'll drop in him, and him, and him, and him. And over here, yep, that's fine. So I'm going to expect the oak to go in here, because he's nearest, and this filter allows it. And then for this guy, I've got a blacklist on spruce and birch. So jungle, being the last one left, I would expect to be allowed to go in there. There goes the spruce. The oak goes in the first one. There goes birch. And jungle, not on the blacklist, goes inside. Over here, I've got a whitelist, so only allow birchwood planks, except I'm ignoring the metadata. So I'm saying basically allow planks of any kind, doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm using this restriction to say only allow 19 items, max total items in the inventory, and use the or dictionary. So any kind of planks would be fine. Not just Minecraft vanilla planks, but let's say I had um, forestry installed, or if I had Natura installed, or if I had Biomes of Plenty installed, any of these other mods that add different kinds of plank wood, which all use the same or dictionary name of plank wood, any of those would be allowed, but only up to 19 of them. And as you can see, I've, those extra ones that have been going by have been getting dropped off in here. So let's say I put, uh, turn this guy off, and I'm going to say four of these. All right, yeah, we'll say five of those. And we'll say five of those, and we'll say five of those, and we'll say five of those. We're going to expect the oak to get pulled out. And uh, there we go. Um, yeah, let's just get rid of both of those guys so we don't have to worry about it. And we'll rebuild our pipe system and we'll grab another servo.
Nope, that's fine. And so now what we should expect to see is the first 19 blocks of wood are going to get sent into this chest, and then any remaining blocks of wood are going to wind up going here because it's the last thing on the line. It's also the furthest thing on the line, so it's the last thing will get selected as a destination. And I think, yeah, good. So we should be getting four items at a time. Now we're at 15, so we'll get four more, and then we'll start to see things going off in the other direction. Ah, uh, yeah, I <laughs> forgot about that. It's uh, 19 of any given stack, so that's what we're going to see here. But we shouldn't get any more than 19 of any particular kind of item. There we go. And now the rest are just going to filter on past. Okay, so those are your filters. Uh, servos are handy for pulling things out, and filters are handy for saying you can or cannot move something here. And last, and certainly not least, in fact, kind of the most useful, are retrievers. These are basically the same kind of deal as servos, except in the opposite direction. So instead of saying, I'm going to take stuff from this inventory and push it into the pipe system and wherever it goes is where it goes, here we're saying, go look at any attached inventories in this pipe system and pull out items matching this description. So here I have, say, a whitelist saying, go get me some coal. And I'm going to yank that out one at a time, and I'm going to dump it into this furnace. So when I turn this on, it's going to search the entire network, which of course is super simple in this example, uh, and then start pulling things out. And of course, once this is full, it's going to say, okay, yeah, I can't stuff anything else in here. I'm going to stop doing that for a while. Uh, and then once the, the coal gets burnt up, it'll start pulling in some more. Uh, one word of warning, though. Retrievers can be very, very hard on your server, particularly if you have a very, very large uh, network of pipes. So um, use them cautiously and generally make very simple networks, like just one stretch of pipes between two machines, rather than going off to like your entire storage system, <laughs> because things will get really, really slow on uh, even a single player game if you do that. And that is it for thermal expansion and thermal dynamics and thermal foundation and COFH core all together. Um, an enormously huge mod pack and an enormously important one. Um, as you explore different mods, you'll notice almost all of the ones that deal with power of any kind, you know, electrical power, do you use the system that Thermal Expansion created, this uh, Redstone Flux system. Uh, so you're going to find this over and over and over again, and in almost any mod pack you're going to play on or want to build yourself, you're going to wind up using some of the core mods, uh, at least COFH core, if not Thermal Foundation as well, uh, because so many things are based upon it. Um, even Buildcraft, which it predates um, this mod, it uses it. So it's uh, something you'll see a lot of. Uh, so quickly in review, going back through the entire mod pack here in reverse order, uh, you've got your retrievers and filters and servos, which allow you very fine control over moving items through a network. You've got your viaducts and your long-range viaducts to move the player around. You've got your signal and plated ducts of various kinds to move both power and items or fluid. Uh, your item ducts of various kinds, including the impulse item ducts to move things quickly. Fluid ducts, uh, your regular and hardened varieties, as well as your super laminar flow to move massive, massive amounts. You've got uh, various kinds of flux ducts to produce or to move higher and higher capacities of power. And then finally, your... Um, your, your insulated, uh, yeah, your insulated ones uh, to be able to move basically an infinite amount of power. 
you've got a whole bunch of different kinds of dynamos that run on various kinds of fuel, ranging from coins to redstone to uh, combinations of elemental chemicals, uh, various combustible fluids, uh, magma, various combustible solids, um, all of which have their own little augments and uh, you know improvements that you can make to the generators as you go along. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of different devices that do lots of cool things from uh, moving items around and collecting liquids from trees, making machines more efficient, destroying items you don't need anymore, uh, being able to create various materials, uh, stone and uh, ice and uh, here we have our ability to charge up devices that can hold a charge. A lot of extra mods um, add various items that require a charge. So Redstone Arsenal, also produced by the same people, uh, has armor and tools and weapons that uh, need to be charged up in order to be used, and this is how you do that. You've got uh, your fractioning still to turn less valuable fluids or less energy intense fluids into more energy intense fluids. You've got your uh, magma crucible and glacial uh, uh, fluid transposer to be able to melt and then fill up containers of melted fluids and things. Here we've got our compactor for making plates and coins and uh, solid blocks of metal. The phytogenic insulator for accelerating your growth of plants your induction smelter for melting two different kinds of metal together and making various kinds of other materials, your sawmill for cutting planks uh, or cutting wood into planks but also for chopping up all sorts of things that uh, you might have, pulverizer for grinding down especially ores into dusts which gives you the capability of doubling, trebling or even quadrupling your ore production between that and the induction smelter. Uh, your redstone furnace, lots of different uh, specializations, uh, doing anything from cooking your food to making creosote or just smelting ores, whatever you happen to have. Uh, all of these machines have the ability to be upgraded to be able to hold various augments and uh, extensions to their capabilities. And um, you've also got all of the origin and new materials uh, from you know, tin and copper, silver, lead, nickel, and platinum, as well as various sources of fluids uh, that you might want to use. So oil and um, glow, enervated glowstone and uh, destabilized redstone. If you enjoyed this uh, series, then go ahead and uh, like this video and like the other videos in the series. If you want to know when the next Mod Spotlight is coming out, go ahead and subscribe, and I will talk to you later.